here we go. All right, welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be talking about Eider in Valheim and how to use the magic and the, how I think a lot of people aren't using it to its potential. So, and we'll go into that a little more later in the video. So if you like this kind of content, be sure to leave me a like, comment, subscribe, all that fun jazz. We'll go ahead and jump right into this. So, Eider. Um, the, let's just go over the elemental magic first and talk about that. So we have the Staff of Embers. It's going to do blunt damage and fire damage. Costs 35 Eider to use, but it doesn't actually, as your elemental magic skill goes up, it will cost less Eider to use this staff. So this, this one is really good. You throw fireballs, it does AoE damage. It's great. You know, uh, okay, so the second elemental staff is the Staff of Frost, and this one's a, quite a bit different from the Staff of Embers. We'll go over, we'll, I'll show you both of them in action in a second, but this one's different in that it re only requires five Eider per shot, so it's going to act a little bit different. It'll do 32 frost damage. Also slowing the enemies, which is amazing. I really like the Staff of Frost. But let's, uh, let's take a look at it. So this is your Staff of Frost, and when, when you hold the button down, it kind of fires off like a machine gun a little bit. Uh, it's a little different from the Staff of Embers. Staff of Embers, you're just throwing the fireball and it does the AoE damage. Uh, so it's both of them are really good and they each one is situational which one you want to use. That's the elemental magic though. And I feel like the elemental magic has been covered by other people well enough that I'm not going to focus any more on it. The ones I really want to focus on for this video are the Staff of Protection and the Dead Razor. So the Staff of Protection says 60 Eider to use it, which it's not actually. So we're, we'll just go ahead and use it. I don't know how much it used, but it was significantly less than 60. Once you have this Staff upgraded to level 3, the magical barrier that it puts around you will last for 30 minutes. And I don't know if this is accurate, but it says damage absorption based on skill. So mine will be different from yours, depending on what your uh, blood magic is at. Mine says it will absorb 415 damage. So... Whenever you're, especially in the Mistlands, whenever you leave your base, you might you should always have this shield around you. Um, just because you don't always see the, like the Seekers and everything before they actually attack you. So having the shield around you is going to make you a lot more survivable. Uh, right now, I have used all three of the magic foods right now, and I have a hundred, right, right around a hundred hit points. So, yeah, that's like one hit from some of the things in the Mistlands. It, you're gonna have a hard time surviving unless you remember to use your bubble, the magical barrier that it puts around you. The other magic staff we're going to talk about is the Dead Razor. So, the Dead Razor, it says it costs 100 Eider to use it. Uh, that That's not entirely accurate. It goes down with uh, your blood magic skill. I don't really know how much it takes. So, I think it's using about 80, 85 Eider for me. I, I'm not sure. It doesn't really reflect it. And at rank 
it, once you've upgraded this staff to rank three, you can control three skeletons at once. There's two down there and one there. So these guys are great for distractions and to keep enemies from overwhelming you. Uh, but one of the biggest things about using the dead razor once you have your skeletons raised is to go ahead and use your staff of protection and you can put the bubble of protection or the magical barrier around your skeletons and that will help them stay alive a lot better and they end up doing pretty decent damage as long as they can stay alive so uh, I'm gonna throw up a video here in a minute the, showing a little bit of gameplay where I'm actually using the skeletons a little more. The skeletons are kind of useless in the Mistlands, just to be fair. Uh, there's so many pathing issues for the AI that I, I usually don't bother using the skeletons in the Mistlands. It, it's just doesn't work exactly right. However, uh, before we get to the gameplay, I wanted to talk about the mage food. There's three different kinds of mage food in the game right now. With the release of Ashlands, I expect there will be more. Uh, there is the stuffed mushroom. This is going to give you 12 stamina, 75 eider, duration of 25 minutes, and heals for 3 hit points per tick. Then there is the seeker aspect. Uh, 28 health, 14 stamina, 85 eider, duration of 30 minutes, and 3 HP healing per tick. And then there is the Yggdrasil Porridge. I don't know how you're supposed to say that. I don't care. No. You know, we'll just go over 27 health, 13 stam, 80 eider, 25 minute duration, and 3 hit points per tick on the healing uh, so those are the three mage foods in the game right now that you can make um, the porridge itself I find the uh, mats for it to be a little harder to come up with so I usually don't have as much it's right here the four sap the three barley two royal jelly the game I'm in currently, I'm having a problem getting enough sap. I've been working on fixing that, but I don't have as much of this food as I like. The Seeker Aspic is really easy to make. Royal Jelly, Mage Cap, and Seeker Meat. So, this one is really easy to get your hands on. The mats are just stupid easy. And then there is the stuffed mushroom, two turnips, a blood clot, three mage cap. Also, mats for this are really easy. The only one that I've really had any issue with at all is the Yggdrasil porridge. So, sometimes I do not use the Yggdrasil porridge and throw a salad on, or if I'm going to fight a boss or something I will use the seeker aspic the salad and the porridge just so I have a lot of stamina to use to run around and kite things uh, and keep enemies at range uh, I find if I use all three mage foods that I really don't have as much stamina as I'd like uh, looks like I'm sitting about 85 right now so I, I, th I find it more beneficial to have more stem than to have a little more eider. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people that instead of a salad, though, will go for a health food like the Mist Hair Supreme just to have more health on them. But honestly, uh, with as long as you're remembering to use your magical barrier your health shouldn't be that much of an issue if you get hit and you see your magical barrier go down and you lose health that's just a great time for you to go ahead and re reapply your magical barrier to keep yourself alive so 
Um, so, yeah, let's go ahead and throw some gameplay up now. Okay, so here we've got some gameplay in the background. I'm going to be clearing out this uh, fueling camp in the plains. And you'll notice I summoned all three of my skeletons and shielded them. So we're going to go ahead and clear this out. But this is exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, people not using magic in the best way possible. Uh, I know... I know the skeletons are a little wonky and you can't really use them in some places, but when you can, these things are just really effective. They're, they're doing really good damage as long as you're putting the shield on them and helping them stay alive a little bit. So the added benefit is that they're going to be a really good distraction for you. But the main thing, the main point of this video is don't, don't just focus on the elemental magic. Yes, it's awesome. You know, you're, it's very satisfying to use. It's very effective. But it's only half. It's only one part of using magic in Valheim. So don't, don't block yourself into just using the elemental magic. Make sure you level up your blood magic so that you can actually, you know, have an effective shield and your skeletons. Look, one of my skeletons finally just now died. I still have two alive. I could reshield them at this point, but the camp is almost clear. But my point, my whole point about this video is... Yes, the ele elemental magic is amazing. The Staff of Embers, the Staff of Frost, both amazing. But, that's only one side of the coin. And you need to always have this shield around you whenever you leave your base. And, when possible, especially like here in the plains, or if you're going to fight a boss... Have your skeletons out and shield them as well. It's going to give you, you know, an extra cushion, an extra uh, distraction for the mobs that will let you put in a lot more damage. And uh, I know, I know the skeletons aren't all that useful in the Mistlands. We've already talked about that. But Ashlands is coming out, and I think you'll find that the skeletons will be actually useful there. So, can't wait for that to happen. But I just wanted to throw this out before Ashlands comes out. Because, me, for one, I prefer playing with the magic in this game instead of just the sword and shield or, you know, whatever else you're using. I find the magic to be more effective and more satisfying to use. So, uh, with Ashlands coming out, I've been thinking a little bit more about it. Uh, I think the Staff of Embers won't be as useful in the Ashlands as the Staff of Frost. But, I, just a reminder for people not to forget the blood magic aspect of the magic in Valheim. Uh, yeah, so that's all I've got for you. Uh, remember to leave me a like, comment, subscribe, all that fun jazz. Let me know what you think about it. Let me know if you prefer the magic play style or the melee play style. You know, whichever one you prefer. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you in the next one.